The PlayStation 5 has been a huge success so far. It's sold over 30 million copies by uh, January 2023, which is good. If you're a new PS5 owner, what games have you been on the lookout for? What's up, everybody? Chaos here. Today, we're going to be looking at some of the absolute best games available for the PlayStation 5. And just to be clear, we're going to be talking about actual PlayStation 5 games, not PS4 games that are backwards compatible or anything like that. So drop a like. Let me know which of these games you played. Do you have a PS5? I hope you do. At number 15. Gran Turismo 7. Now, GT has been one of Sony's premier racing franchises for decades. In the seventh installment, it was a worthy successor to the previous entries. Despite being called Gran Turismo 7, it's actually the eighth game in the series, and while it was initially criticized for its excessive microtransactions, the gameplay's good. It's really good. It's worth trying if you're a fan of racing sims. It's beautiful, immersive, full of content. So, yes, there's a decent number of issues that were at launch, but it's a great game now. And you can actually get it discounted. Honestly, worth another look if you were one of the people that passed over it when it launched last year. At number 14 today, Sackboy A Big Adventure. Who remembers Little Big Planet? Most people don't. But either way, Sackboy A Big Adventure is a great game for fans of old school platformers. Released in late 2020 for the PS4 and the PS5, later ported to the PC, it was a 3D platformer starring the mascot of the Little Big Planet franchise as he jumps from platform to platform in world to world, collecting items, dodging obstacles, all accompanied by a charming soundtrack and some really good visuals. Sackboy isn't going to break any records, not going to destroy any expectations, but it's a solid game and a charming throwback to the PS3 era of platforming games, which I really, really miss. There's nothing wrong with that. There's not. It's worth a pickup if you've never tried it. Next up is Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate. Now, the Final Fantasy VII Remake was a pretty impressive overhaul of the original game, even if it wasn't very upfront about only including the first part of the story. The remake launched in 2020. The following year, it was re-released as FF7 Remake Integrate with a number of improvements over the original version. Now, this one featured faster loader times and improved visuals, as well as new combat options and a photo mode so you could save all your pictures of those landscapes and combat encounters as you go through it. Now, with the next part of the Final Fantasy VII Remake set to launch by the end of 2024, it's a long time, it's a perfect time to pick up the first part give it a try. Especially if you've never played the original game. Just try not to get too attached. Just try not to get too attached. At number 12. The Last of Us Part 1. Now, before you dislike this video, let me say, I agree this game was a bit unnecessary. Releasing a full-price remake of a game less than 10 years old with less content than the original was not the best move on Sony's part, and I agree with much of the criticism uh, that the game received leading up to the release. That being said, it's still an excellent game, and if you can get it for 40 or less, I recommend it. The story is still just as good as it was back in 2013. The gameplay's tight. It's refined. Ultimately, I think the PS4 version is still great and obviously much cheaper. But if you can find the remake on sale and you've never played the previous versions, pick it up. It's a solid remake of a great game. It just was not distributed in the proper way. At number 11 today is Ghostwire Tokyo. Now, Tango Gameworks has gotten a lot of positive attention recently thanks to Hi-Fi Rush. But their last game, Ghostwire Tokyo... It didn't get the praise it deserved. The developers described it as a karate meets magic game and it had some of the most unique combat on the market today. Use a bunch of cool magic abilities to take down enemies while also beating them up with old fashioned ways as you try to get to the bottom of this strange conspiracy in Tokyo, Japan. The game is currently available on PS5 and PC, but there should be an Xbox port coming in the near future. At number 10. I'm actually playing this over on my Chaos Plays On channel right now. If you guys want to check it out, link at the top of the description. Dead Space The Remake 2023. I was one of the many people worried about the Dead Space remake when it was announced, but I'm happy to report I was wrong. It is fantastic. Well worth your time whether you played the original or not. This game puts you on this massive space cruiser after an alien infestation has horrifically wiped out most of the crew, turned them into mutated monsters, and it's up to you to figure out what happened, and then you try to escape. I mean, 2023 is shaping up to be the year of excellent horror remakes, so hopefully the RE4 remake can be just as good as this one. At number 9, Horizon Forbidden West. Now, Horizon was one of the most surprising successes of the last few years, with the first game selling well over 20 million units despite being this brand new IP. Now, the sequel, Forbidden West, wasn't quite as unique or groundbreaking, but it was still really good. It was. Lots of great ideas. The world's engaging, the gameplay's challenging, it keeps you there till the very end. With how much money Sony is pumping into this series, I certainly don't think we've seen the last of uh, Forbidden West or Horizon or the franchise at all. At number 8, Death Stranding The Director's Cut. 
This was a difficult game to market because it was weird, but it's gotten a lot of positive attention over the years, and I'm happy to say it now, rightfully seen as one of the best games in Sony's lineup. It's a hard game to summarize, so you'll have to take my word for it. But Death Stranding is one of the most unique, engaging, immersive games you've ever played. There, I said that right. You really do have to try it now. I mean, I'm serious. Uh, if you had never played it, pick it up. Just get ready, because it's different. It's going to be a while before another AAA game this unique ever comes out on market. At number seven, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Now, Ratchet and Clank dominated the PS2 era. There was addicting, charismatic, 3D action platforming gameplay, but, shockingly enough, the long-awaited comeback game was actually good enough to stand on its own with the originals. It's not every day a franchise game uh, like this is worth your attention. But Rift Apart was good. Aside from the gorgeous visuals and the characters, the gameplay was unique and an awesome evolution of the old-school Ratchet and Clank games on the PS2 and the PSP. We need another PSP or Vita. I really hope the success of this game means we're going to get more entries in the series because I think Insomniac Games has proven uh, that they can do it. Speaking of Insomniac, they're the best. At number six, Spider-Man Remastered. They can do no wrong! Their version of Spider-Man dropped in 2018. While it was critically acclaimed at release, it seemed to have only gotten better with time. The remastered version is currently available on the PS5 and the PC, and it offers a number of enhancements, including improved visuals, smoother gameplay, a handful of bonus costumes for the deep out Kai deep cut Spidey fans. And on top of that, the game features a story and addictive gameplay loop that has me super excited for the sequel coming later this year. Is this the best superhero game ever made? You tell me. At number five, Returnal. Now, of all the games on this list, this is probably one of my least favorites personally. It was recently ported to the PC and it helped get some new eyes on it, which is good because it does deserve it. It's a third-person shooter roguelike developed by House Marquee and released on the PS5 in 2021. Had solid reviews, but underwhelming sales because it's hard. It is. Roguelike games can be tough on new players, but Returnal is a game that deserves to be played even if you're not used to the trial and error format. The gun plays good, the world is engaging, the level design, it will keep you going over and over, and not to mention the game just absolutely looks amazing, but get ready for the learning curve. Don't let it push you away. At number four, Ghost of Tsushima, the director's cut. One of the best games of 2020, hands down, and the director's cut upgraded everything. You play as a samurai trying to protect his island from the Mongol invasion, and while the open world design got somewhat mixed reviews, the combat and the presentation, top notch. It's one of the most immersive games on the market right now, and the additions made for the director's cut, they're awesome. They got You have new story content, new items to find along the journey. I'm, I'm still holding out hope that Sony and Sucker Punch announce a sequel this year, but if it doesn't happen, we do have a movie coming. At number three, Demon Souls 2020. Now, Dark Souls changed gaming forever, but that game simply wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for Demon's Souls, one of the first big PS5 exclusives was a top-to-bottom remake from From Software's Classic, and the 2020 remake is one of the best games available on Sony's latest console. The visuals were amazing. The combat's smooth, it's fluid, the world is deep and engaging, and a lot of people didn't play the original game, but even if you did, I recommend picking up the remake because it's a perfect example of a remake done right. And until the PC port inevitably comes out, the PS5 version is the only way you get to experience that. At number two today... God of War Ragnarok. Did you know this is the fastest selling first party Sony game in history? Yep, the 2008 God of War, or 2018, not 2008, God of War reboot successfully transitioned the franchise from the over the top hack and slash to something a little more grounded and serious, so naturally expectations were high for the sequel. Ragnarok launched in 2022 on the PS4 and the PS5, and it blew those expectations out of the water. Tight gameplay, gorgeous visuals, excellent storytelling. Kratos will always be a major part of Sony's gaming output, but with the God of War 6 reportedly ditching the Norse setting and taking us maybe to Egypt? I mean, there you go. Ragnarok should be at the top of your must-play list. With that being said, I think there's one game I think is a more essential buy for PS5 owners. At number one today, Elden Ring. From Software completely transformed the way action RPGs are made with Elden Ring. They completely transformed the way open world maps are designed as well. Elden Ring perfectly translates their classic Dark Souls formula into something larger and even more grand. All the company with a great story and beautiful music to create one of the most unique, gripping, rewarding, and immersive experiences in gaming history. I mean, even if you never played a From Software game, I recommend you pick up Elden Ring and see what all the hype is about because it didn't become the most awarded game in history for no reason. Going forward, you're going to see a lot of action RPGs trying to emulate Elden Ring the same way the genre has been trying to emulate Dark Souls for the last decade, and I honestly can't wait to see what From Software has up their sleeve for the future. 
So if you're a PS5 owner and you haven't picked up Elden Ring, do it. You won't regret it. And there you have it, my friends. Those are the best PS5 games out right now. If you want to see the Xbox version of this list, you let me know.